What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Happy Monday. Uh, just got through listening to uh, Jackpot, Carolina Jackpot show from last night with Rob Sanders, and people were talking about, you know, yesterday a lot, uh, the Earl's kid did commit from South Carolina, and we dropped. And I know a lot of people don't watch a lot of these recruiting shows. Um, they just don't get into it, right? A lot of these kids have flipped. Uh, even when they commit, especially early in the season, you hear it all the time. Uh, we believe it when they put their name on the dotted line, uh, sign their national letter of intent, right? Well, it's been around about the Shamari Earls kid for going on two or three weeks. Uh, I watched some inside the Gamecocks. Uh, I know a lot of people have a hard time with Jason Shepard, but he does know what he's talking about when it comes to this recruiting stuff. That's the that's his business, right? He said two or three weeks ago on one of the shows that it didn't look good for the Earls kid to stay at South Carolina. They had been waiting on him to flip. He made a, a quick decision around the spring game, somewhere around that time, uh, to come, which scares them. Anytime somebody does that, it's kind of scary to these recruiting service that the kid's going to stick where he originally commits. And we see it everywhere now, right? A lot of teams are dropping commits. Ole Miss lost some commits. Southern Cal's lost a bunch of guys. Uh, but Rob Sanders brought up something really interesting last night. But I, before I get into that, I watched this guy named Brooks Austin. He's a Georgia guy. He goes to a lot of the high schools. He's into that recruiting thing. He also said a couple weeks ago on one of his shows that Shamari Earls was going to flip to Georgia. So Georgia already knew this information. They knew the kid was coming, right? Everybody's just been kind of waiting on, curious why he hadn't done it. I spoke about it on one of my live shows. Uh, it kind of, the writing was on the wall that he was leaving South Carolina. And I myself, I kind of get into, I do follow a lot of these kids that are committed to South Carolina or in the running for South Carolina. Uh, whether they're going to commit or not, just to kind of gather some information on what they're posting. You know, I, the whole dropping of the top, uh, here's my top 10, and they come back a couple months later, here's my top four. I don't know. I think if a kid's making a decision, he knows where he's going most of the time after his official visits. And I get you're trying to build your NIL, I guess uh, it, it's based upon your social media these days for some reason. Uh, I, I don't know how it's not based upon your ability to play football and be coached. Um, but Rob brought up an interesting thing. He brought up the top 10 NIL schools, right, who's making all the most money. And people buy into that, but here's the thing. The teams you didn't hear on that top 10 list, Georgia, Alabama. Did you hear their NIL collectives in the top 10 in the country? No, what you're hearing are the teams that are buying transfer portal kids you heard Ole Miss mention look at Ole Miss's team you heard Miami mention look at Miami's team they're paying big money out to get these transfers I don't know how much of this NIL is going into recruiting um, I'm sure it's got to be in there you see a lot of these but Ole Miss is in the top 10 but still lost three commitments last week uh, yes South Carolina does have an NIL collective Yes, a lot of people say, oh, there's a ton of money in there. If anyone thinks that South Carolina's collective is bringing in the money that Texas, Texas A&M, uh, and those bigger schools are bringing in their collective, you're wrong. There's not oil money in South Carolina like there's oil money in Texas. You're competing against, think about it, two of the biggest universities in the country with Texas, Texas A&M. South Carolina is not that university. So you have to build. Um, Billy Cole comes on there, and he's on my show, and he's talking about this in South Carolina's recruiting. Well, how come we're not offering guys? Well, first and foremost, as a recruiter, you're going to put your feelers out on where a kid is thinking anyway, right? So you, just because you don't make an offer doesn't mean you didn't make a phone call. doesn't mean you didn't talk to someone around that kid, and they're like, well, this is his top schools. You can make an offer to him if you want to. You can send out that little piece of paper. People tend to forget that a lot of offers that come from a lot of schools to these aren't really real offers. They're not committable offers, right? A lot of these boys are second and third at a position at a school. And if the team misses 
the coaching staff misses on the number one guy they're after, then they fall back on all, the, all those other offers. This is one thing that a lot of people are trying to get away from with these uncommittable offers. And this is why you hear about the walk, they're wanting to cut down on the scholarship players or get rid of walk-ons is because they're trying to get away from this. That's the whole thing behind it is the NCAA is trying to get away from these uncommittable offers. Everybody's gonna, you can offer 100 players. You can only take 25. So if you whiff somewhere else, you fall back on your second offer and you go back after a kid. Earl's was probably not the first offer that Georgia put out for that position. They probably went after somebody they did not get. So where do they go? They go back to Earl's. But th this has been taught, and I get the kids out of Virginia or wherever. He he's not a Georgia kid. He flips and he goes. But everyone had to suspect whether he was going to stay or not. Uh, I buy into the South Carolina kids that commit to South Carolina. But I've told people before, don't go buy the jerseys with the names on the back of these kids anymore. This is why I quit watching the NFL. Because you, you support the NFL, you buy a jersey. I have a Christian McCaffrey jersey hanging in my studio. And then he's either traded away or he leaves during free agency. They're gone before you can even blink your eye. And now in the day and age in college football, the transfer portal and this NIL stuff, you're having the same thing. These kids are out here trying to sell you their merchandise and you're trying to buy, you want to buy it and support them. But then overnight, like with Jaheim Bell, he's gone. So if you'd have went out and bought his merch, South Carolina merchandise and all that stuff, well, shit, kid's gone the next day. So you want to support the kids, but can you trust them? Uh, the Earl's kid said he was a thousand percent committed to South Carolina. No, the fans are a thousand committed, thousand percent committed to South Carolina. We always have been. We pack stadiums when the team's not very good. We watch them on TV when the team's not very good. We still buy South Carolina merchandise to support them. Where the money goes when it goes into an NIL, I don't know personally. I do put $10 a month in. Uh, what was Carolina Rise? I think it's all one now, which is under the Garnet Trust. And just because one kid flips off my team doesn't mean I'm going to stop paying my money. You know, it goes to support baseball players, basketball. That's why people don't understand. The NIL is not just for football. It supports everybody that's in your programs at your university. It's not just football. And some teams, if that's what they want to do and they want to put all their money into a football program, that's great. <coughs> but don't think Tennessee, who's number one on that list of uh, getting the NIL money and donors or whatever, don't think Tennessee don't put money in their baseball program. We just saw it. They won a national championship. Don't think that these teams aren't putting it into their basketball programs. You see them starting to get better. They haven't paid those players, too. Uh, women's basketball. All these people are in that NIL. And I, I I get it at South Carolina. A lot of people are kind of ticked off at Shane Beamer. And, they, you know, we saw all this Shane Beamer needs to be fired stuff. I'm not on that boat yet. Not quite yet. But we, there's a season to come. Let's see how this season plays out. Now it's all on Beamer. It's his recruits. It's his kids. There's some positive momentum in South Carolina with the players. Nobody in the national media is going to give us credit, dude. We had a quarterback that has four passes under his belt. Uh, two touchdowns. They're not going to give us credit for that. Now, discounting our running back room is ridiculous. Uh, discounting a defense that returns uh, three All-American uh, guys at safety and cornerback with Kilgore, uh, D.Q. Smith, and Nicky Memorial were all freshmen All-Americans. People are discounting that. Let them discount it if that's what they want to do. Um, I think my team can surprise some people. Now, I heard my buddy Jordan Dealmaker say South Carolina might lose some games they're supposed to win. Boy, that better not happen. Because right now, you're probably only favored in four games, and there's only one power four school in that mix, and that's Vanderbilt. So if you go out and lose to Walford and ODU and uh, whatever sister of the poor team we play this year and or at least the Vanderbilt and yeah Shane Beamer's seat will be more than hot I can promise you that you, you better not you're only predicted to win those four games you're going to be favored in those four games you better not drop one of them so losing to someone you're you're not supposed to lose to would be very very bad uh, for the Gamecocks this year and Shane Beamer and that coaching staff I mean that there's, 
one reason I think that Shane Beamer's still rumored in that hot seat is there was no no changes at defense coordinator, and I think a lot of people are still ticked off at that. I think a lot of people want to see what the defense is going to be this year. Clayton White made some changes. The defense seemed to play better at the end of the year last year. So people are riding with that. But I'm telling you, you cannot finish as bad as South Carolina was in defense year after year. You can't go one year we were horrible at passing, 120s or whatever. The next year you're horrible at rushing. It's got to come together where you're good at both. And it can't. you can't have one side dragging the other side back. It won't ever, ever be uh, satisfactory to the South Carolina fan bet. Now, people saying, well, you you agree with being mediocre. No, nobody wants to be mediocre, dude. But not every team can win the national championship either. If you look at the SEC, people do say, well, it's top-heavy. Yeah, it is. It is fairly top-heavy because there's some teams that brought in a lot of talent. Everybody's looking at Ole Miss. Uh, Mizzou did very well last year, has an easier schedule, so it looks like uh, they'll be pumped up because their schedule's not that difficult. Um, Georgia, Alabama, you know, LSU, even though their defense was horrible last year, still won a bunch of football games. They still have talent on that football team. Now, they got questions just like everybody else, so are they considered the elite of the elite this year? They're going to have to prove it. Texas had a good football team last year. Just like everybody else, they lost players too. They brought in players, they lost players. Uh, everybody likes to talk about the history of these teams. Not Unless a guy was on the team in the last two years, it, what you did in the past don't even matter because those guys ain't, ain't even on the team anymore. They're not on your roster. Is there some player from, uh, you know, you might have a couple holdovers from the COVID year that, that were freshmen way back then. They still might be on your team, but most of the time, no. So if you're not looking at the track record from the last two or three years where you still might have some kids in there, it doesn't even matter what happened before that because these, these teams are not the same. And to sit here and say that your team has to be full of five stars to make the national championship game, I'm pretty sure Washington and TCU has proved everyone wrong on that. They developed, they had good football players. They brought in some guys from transfer portal. They developed a good football team. But someone please go look up how many five stars were on those two teams that made national championship game for me. I, I mean, put it in the comment section because honestly, I, I didn't look it up. I don't know. But I don't think they're, I don't think those teams were loaded down with five stars and they made it to national championship games over teams that were. That, just to answer my question, I don't know. You, you guys tell me in the comment section. Um, but I do agree with Jackpot. I, I know my man Dealmaker's my buddy or whatever, and Shane Beamer's safe for two years or whatever. I think Shane Beamer's safe for a year, and that's this year. You go dropping games to Vanderbilt or Old Dominion or Wofford or Akron, and I, these type teams, dude, your ass is on the hot seat. So you better win the games you're supposed to win, which is four, and then you better throw in another two or three games that you're not going to be favored in. Or the fan base will scream. And you say fan base don't make decisions. Fan base is the ones that got Will Muschamp fired. His performance as a, as a coach of winning four games, the seat got hot. And in 2020, it, it, the one time everyone says a coach is safe because there's a pandemic and there's no money, there's no asses in the seats in these stadiums, he got fired. So I take it for whatever it is. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I, I try to look at both sides of a coin. I, I, I do think Shane Beamer's safe for one year. But if the, if the wheels fall off the Shane train, dude, he's going to be off the tracks. If he goes out and, and, and win, the only three game, games he wins are against non-Power 4 schools, I, I don't know how you justify keeping him. His salary is not high enough. Now, I get it. I've made this statement. I don't see a lot of coaches getting these big contracts getting fired because of this lawsuit that's coming out for this $20, $22 million a year that these teams are going to have to uh, put out there. The big buyouts, I don't know how many is that it's going to be putting other people's contracts anymore. I, I think contracts may go back to the Stoops contract where Mark Stoops, the better he does, the more he makes, right? That's, that's 
what you should be getting, not guarantees. Because of guaranteed income, maybe you don't coach as hard as you're supposed to. Uh, and everybody, Beamer's had a track record of recruiting uh, pretty good, right? He's been right in there with all these guys. Uh, Beamer's never been a head coach, but his recruiting has been right in there and above a lot of team so with coaches that's been around forever. This year, yeah, we lost one guy, dropped way down. Hey, recruiting season's not over with, right? Last time I checked, these kids aren't signing anything until December. So we'll see what he does the rest of this class. Maybe he holds a lot of those spots for some transfers to come in. Uh, that seems to be the way a lot of these teams are going now. Instead of really getting these high recruiting classes, they're blending a decent recruiting class in with trying to get a good transfer pool to win. It's just new college football, and I guess we got to get used to it. And that doesn't mean we have to always agree with the way it's going, but that's why I don't buy a jersey that puts a kid's name on the back. Because before before the ink dries or the stitches are all the way sewn in, the kid's probably going somewhere else. Um, but I'm going to always be a 1,000% committed to my football team. The good or the bad, I take the good, bad, ugly, however you want to state it. Hey, the heartaches that come with being a South Carolina fan, it's part of it, right? It's the passion of the sport and why we love college football so much. Um, any, what I said, any given Saturday, somebody can be beat. Uh, but I got to get out here and go to work. Appreciate everybody for always hanging out. Um, drop your comments. You may disagree with what I'm saying. You may agree with what I'm saying. Uh, or give me your opinion on it. I mean... Shane Beamer's safe as long as he does what he's supposed to do this year. Uh, I just think the Florida game has got him more on the hot seat from last year than anything. That's my opinion. Had he won that Florida game, went 6-6, six and six, got those 15 extra practices where you'd probably have a little more sellers in there, uh, getting some more experience uh, and playing in a bowl game. I, I don't know if people would be looking at South Carolina the same as they look at them right now uh, by only going 5-7 and seven last year can say it was just that one game, but that was the game you should have won, that you had won, and you gave away. Um, but, I'm going to get out of here. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Please don't forget that like, subscribe. Uh, appreciate everyone that always comes and hangs out. Don't forget we're doing the live shows back again on Wednesdays. I'm, I'm in on the weekends. I can't really do it during the week right now, but I'll get those back once the uh, football season starts. But Friday nights, usually around 8, 8.30, I'll do a live stream. Come hang out with me. Put your comments in there. Uh, Saturdays here, like this past Saturday, I did a live stream. Uh, had a good conversation. Uncle Lou was in there hanging out with us. Uh, Mr. Harry Leg is always on there hanging out with the Rooster Man. He talks good college football knowledge. He don't talk bullshit. Uh, he knows what he talks about before he even says something. But just remember, hey, if, if we're throwing if we're throwing away a recruiting class over one player, we're just I don't know what sad state of mindset my Gamecock fans are in right now. It's just one player, dude. You can't you can't build a team without with a bunch of eyes. So and you can't can't force a kid to come to your school if he doesn't want to. But y'all have a wonderful, peaceful rest of your day. Peace.